In this lesson, we will develop a method for integrating complex expressions by breaking them down into simpler expressions using partial fractions. Now, the concept of breaking down a complex expression into partial fractions is known to you from an earlier algebra class. Well, if you are not familiar with it, let me just refresh your memory. Now, let me start with a simpler expression, say, like this. Now, how do you simplify an expression of the form 3 divided by x plus 2 minus 5 over x minus 5? Well, obviously, the method is taking the common denominator and simplify. What is the common denominator here? x plus 2 times x minus 5. All right, take the common denominator and simplify. When you do that, x minus 2, x plus 2 times x minus 5 becomes the common denominator. That means 3 will get multiplied by x minus 5. And minus 5 will get multiplied by x plus 2 on the numerator, giving you this. So it will be 3 times x minus 5 minus 5 times x plus 2 all over x plus 2 times x minus 5 and that simplifies to just expand them negative 2x minus 20 all over x plus 2 times x minus 5 now this is the result of say simplifying this expression now when you look at this, this is actually a complex expression. If I ask you to integrate it, it will be very tough to integrate it in this form. But if you can break this down into this form, you can see this, these are made up of two simpler forms and both can be integrated. Is that right? Integral f of x minus g of x, both functions can be integrated. So. An expression of this form can be broken down into simpler expressions like this. And that is what is involved in the method of partial fractions. So, how do you begin? In the method of partial fractions, we attempt to break down complex expressions like this into separate forms or separate fractions like this. So, to begin with, what we will say is let this complex expression be equal to a over x plus 2 plus b over x minus 2. Now, once we do this, or what all we need to do is obtain the values of a and b so that the expression on the left can be broken down into these two simpler forms. All right, so while the left side of this expression is difficult to integrate, we can integrate the right side of the expression. All right, now let me review one more time some of the forms that we can write into partial fractions. Some forms of difficult integrals can be made simpler by breaking them down into partial fractions. Now, we will use some simple rules in order to break down a complex expression into a, into the sum of simple expressions, like f of x plus g of x form. All right, the first thing to do is factor the denominator if it is not already in the factored form. Now, if the denominator contains two linear factors, then break it into two partial fractions using constants a and b, as I just illustrated, something like this. Negative 2x minus 20 over x plus 2 times x minus 5 can be written as a over x plus 2 plus b over x minus 2. And what is the criteria so that we can write it like this? The criteria is the denominator must contain the product of two linear factors. x plus 2 is a linear factor, 
x minus 5 is a linear factor. I suppose you know what that means. Now, you can do this only if the denominator contains linear factors. Now, what will you do if there is a third linear factor? If there is a third linear factor, then we'll go on to say c over that factor. Okay. Now, if the denominator contains some power of a linear factor, like x plus 2 to the power of 2, then we break it down into partial fractions like this. Watch how this is done. Now, here we have the third power of x plus 2 there. Now, you can argue that, but can't we write it x plus 2 times x plus 2 times x plus 2 and follow this method? No, you cannot. You've got to follow a different route here. So, if the denominator is some power of a linear factor, then your right side will be a over x plus 2 plus b over x minus 2 to the power of 2 plus c over x minus... Now, this has to be changed into x plus 2. That's right. So, once again, if the denominator contains some power of a linear factor, we would go in a progression like this. The first term will be a over x plus 2. The next one will be a over x plus 2 to the power of 2 plus c over x plus 2 to the power of 3. You got to go in that progression for the denominators. If it is x plus 2 to the power of 4, we will add one more term. It will be d over x plus 2 to the power of 4. And we develop a method of finding that constants a, b, c, d, and so on. All right, so we got three rules. There is one more that will be important for us. If the denominator contains a quadratic factor, like x squared minus 5, or 2x squared plus 1, then we break it down into partial fractions like this. For example, if you have the denominator as x plus 2 times x squared plus 1. Now, x plus 2 is the linear factor, and that will be taken care of a over x plus 2. But the next factor is a quadratic factor, x squared plus 1. Now, look at the way it is being taken care of. It is bx plus c over x squared plus 1. That's the way we take care of a quadratic factor. So, basically, if the denominator contains the product of linear factors, you, write the, you have the right side as a over the first factor, plus b over the second factor, plus c over the third factor, and so on. If the denominator is some power of a linear factor, then you go in a certain progression like a over x plus 2 plus b over x plus 2 to the power of 2 plus c over x plus 2 to the power of 3 and so on. And finally, if the denominator has a quadratic factor, you've got to treat that quadratic factor like this, bx plus c over x squared plus 1. All right, let's use these to reduce some expressions in 